All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. So today, you know, I got a lot of great comments last night or, you know, this morning, whatever, yesterday. Uh, I just read them this morning, so this is fantastic. Um, so I want to go over, you know, sort of um, something that I'm seeing here. And uh, real quickly, uh, this fella here says, keep reading. The answer is in the following text. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about, so I asked him to elaborate. And um, okay, let's see. Pre-trib truth. Um, let's see. He he lays out a uh, case for this idea that the dead in Christ will be resurrected. And then there will be a thousand years. And then we that are alive <laughs> will be resurrected. I mean, he doesn't just come out and say it, but that's what he's saying. And if I could, let me find out. You know, I don't want you to think I'm making this up. All right. Unless you can find me another resurrection to look at. Yeah, I can. It's called Jesus. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. How do you guys miss that? Honestly. All we have to do is find the resurrection in the scripture and see if if we can deduce the timing from the resurrection verses. Okay. So, da, 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 da. Well, the first Thessalonians four tells us the resurrection happens first before we are raptured. All right, I gotta find. He says here. Let's go up here. Since the dead in Christ rise first, has to be a resurrection of the dead before we are raptured. All right. So, you know, if I, you just have to take my word on this. What he's implying is that the dead will rise first, and then there will be a thousand years. Here. Here is what is referred to as the first resurrection, and this group reigns with Christ as priest during the thousand-year millennium. Um, okay, so, yeah, so, he, he, you know, this is typical of people that don't know what they're talking about, and excuse me for my, um, you know, my hard words, all right, because this is, you're, you're not getting this on your own. I know it, and you should. If you're being honest, you know it too. You're getting this from a false teacher, and this is what I'm trying to break people of. All right, I, I get it. I'm all alone. Ain't nobody else teaching what the Bible teaches. Apparently, it seems like it, doesn't it? But let me make this clear. Okay, first of all. You have to um, get specific about what it is that you believe. Once you get specific, then you might be able to see, you should be able to see, that what you believe is ridiculous. And I don't want to use words like stupid, but I have a tendency to do that sometimes. I'm not very smart myself, so I use dumb words like stupid. But this this idea is just ridiculous. All right, think about it, man. You've got the end of the world comes when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I'll go over this with you if if you're new. I'll go over this, make it real simple. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. The end of the world. That means it's the end of the world. I, I don't know how, but that gets lost on a lot of people. So, in your scenario, at the end of the world, only the dead are resurrected. And then, apparently, I mean, this is why I'm saying get exact with what you believe. Apparently, after the thousand years, then the living get resurrected well if you think about it you know 
put a little thought into it. Let me let me show something here. It's kind of this is interesting to me. In Psalm 90, verse 10, the days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Wow. If you do the math, three score, uh, uh, how do I say this? Uh, three score is 60 years, all right? One score is 20 years, two score, 40 years, three score, 60 years, four score, 80 years. This is the estimate uh, amount of time that we're gonna live on this world in this world in this body of ours 70 to 80 years in your scenario mr. pre-trib right, in your scenario you've got only the dead in Christ being raptured at the end of the world and then I don't I don't believe you actually come out and say it or maybe you do and I just missed it now, I've had a lot of coffee almost two cups this morning that's a lot for me but the idea is that at the end of the thousand years then the living are resurrected so at at the end of the world the dead are resurrected and then at the end of the thousand years the living are resurrected here's the problem you know I'm 53 years old 53 I don't think I can make it I mean if Jesus comes today I'd have to live to be a thousand and fifty three boys and girls I don't think I can make it I really don't a thousand and fifty three years in this flesh before I'm raptured and resurrected I ain't gonna make it I ain't got a chance so I can't be saved according to Mr. Pretrip I can't be saved your only chance is if you die right now that's your only chance go I wouldn't if that was true I wouldn't I wouldn't wait another second unless you think you can live for a thousand years I wouldn't put it off in another moment go end it right now so that way you can be saved because I don't think you're gonna make it to the second resurrection I really don't You see how ridiculous this is? And, and look, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to be nice and soft about this. Because you're, all these people that teach this, and I'm not blaming Mr. Pretrib. He's been lied to. We all been lied to. But what does the Bible say? That's what I'm going to point out every single time. Stop trusting what men are saying. And what does the Bible say? Are we the first resurrection? Really? What? No, the dead people are. Are you kidding me? Dead people that are in the graves. They're the first resurrection. Then what in the H-E double hockey sticks did Jesus do? Was it all in vain? Are you just saying, meh? Jesus, he just did it in ignorance, didn't he? I mean, just be honest, if that's what you believe. <laughs> why, why in the world would you ignore the Lord Jesus Christ and say, no, the people that are dead in the graves, they're the first resurrection. Jesus, well, if you're going to say that, then Jesus Christ is a liar. Well, just be honest, if that's what you believe. It's okay, it's all right. Just be honest. Because really, if you're not being honest, you're lying to me. 
And how should I take that? How do you take it when somebody lies to you? And so I, that's the way I feel. I feel like these guys, and I'm just to put things in perspective, I, he's not the only one. Anytime I click on a video and I see these guys talking about uh, millennial reign of Christ, to me, they're lying to me. And they're lying to you. But how do you respond to somebody that lies to you? I don't think you should cower to them. You know, and if you really care about people, you got to correct them and show them the truth. Now I know you got to do it with loving kindness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. You got to be loving and kindness and if you're harsh then, you know, then uh, you know, you're wrong. Wait a second. What's this here? Ye serpent. Who said this? We got to get the context on this here. Oh, you know who said it? You know who said that? Oh, maybe I can't prove it. Oh, no, right there. Oh, oh, who are they talking about? Oh, oh, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And what's he say again? Ye serpents. Ye generation of vibrants, of vipers, excuse me. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Well, that's, that's harsh, Jesus. You're supposed to do it with loving kindness. Well, he, he loves those guys. He loves them all, and he's being direct. He ain't beating around the bush. He's telling them directly. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? And so I think there are times when you have to be harsh with these people and be direct because sometimes that'll bring about clarity. And that's what I'm asking for. Bring about some clarity here. So you're saying that only the dead in Christ are raptured. And then only the, the living have to wait a thousand years. Now, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it a thousand years. I'm already 53 years old. There ain't no way. What, unless, I guess, UFO aliens come. And then they inject me with their magic potion. Give me extra bonus life or whatever. <laughs> I mean, come on. And on top of that, you're saying that Jesus Christ is not the first resurrection. When Jesus clearly himself says, I am the resurrection. He's the resurrection. Well, you thought you were the resurrection? Come on, man. Come on, and then we go to 1 Corinthians 15. All right, so I, I don't know where I'm going. Should I go over all this again? I think I should. I think I have to. But let's start here. And if you all just read the Bible and stop listening to false teachers, I think this will make sense for you. Okay, before I get into this, let me make it clear. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When he comes, it's the end of the world. Right, at the end of the world, we are changed. We that are born of God, we are resurrected. We are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This happens at the end of the world. I'll show you, just in case there's any doubt. But when we're up in the air, then our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, God's going to make all of them know that we are the 
elect the chosen of God. And the bottom line is we don't choose God. God chooses us. Uh, we could choose God. We can choose donuts. We can choose whatever we want. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's all about what God chooses. And he's the one that chooses us. And so also is he the one that resurrects us and gives us eternal life. All right, so we are lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. And it's going to be made known to all that we are God's people. And then they will be destroyed. In my opinion, it's going to be worse than what we can imagine for them. And, and also, it's my opinion that this has to happen after we are transformed into our glorified bodies. Um, otherwise it would be too the sorrow would be too great for us alright that's just what I think that's another whole nother issue or whole nother topic probably but when this happens we are transformed into our glorified bodies our enemy is gathered at our feet remember what it says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, this is a prophecy about the end of the world. All right, this is what happens at the end of the world. Now, you think about Noah's time. The world was destroyed by water. When Jesus comes, the world will be destroyed by fire. All right. So you think about Moses, how he led his people out of Egypt. Now Jesus is going to lead us out of this wicked world. What Moses did was a foreshadowing of what is to come at the end of the world and that's really what we're putting our hope in is a much better world than the one we're in right now we are strangers in a strange land and I'm telling you this is a very strange land that we're in Jesus is going to deliver us out of this strange land into our homeland which is above all right so that should be crystal clear right that should be crystal clear so that I mean once our okay so let me go back Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up we that are the chosen of God the elect we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air our enemies gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all so um, Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right so when once uh, you know that happens then we are set back down on a new earth with new heavens all right that's it uh, and that's as simple as it gets is it not and this is consistent all throughout the Bible Everywhere in the Bible, it talks about the same thing. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. We are changed, and then we are set back down on a world of everlasting life without any more sorrow, no more crying, no more death, and no more pain. All right? I, you know, what are you guys teaching here? that the end of the world is not the end of the world really is that what you I mean just come out and just if that's what you believe just be honest you're saying the end of the world is not the end of the world it doesn't make any sense man it does not make any sense and this stuff here what I'm telling you is very simple Jesus comes it's the end of the world all wickedness is destroyed and we are set back down on a new earth that's pretty simple man 
Now what do you expect? Now what are you expecting? Really? A thousand years of zombies walking around? A second chance for the unsaved? None of that is true. None of that's going to happen. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. There are no more chances to be saved. That's it. So you see these movies like The Left Behind, The Nicolas Cage, and all that? It, it's They're lying to you. You don't mind people lying to you? And that should burn your rear end, shouldn't it? And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Everybody's going to know. And there's not going to be an, any doubt whatsoever that there are no more second chances when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright. I mean, that, that should be obvious, right? There are no more second chances. When Jesus comes, it's the end of the world, and that's it. That is it. The show's over. Now you go back and think about, uh, let's do it this way. I want to show you something. You know, I showed you all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. All right? All the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. Now think about this. When Jesus was born, when Herod the king had heard these things, how that the Savior was born, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Why? Why would they be troubled? They should be celebrating. No, they're troubled because they know the judgment of God is real. And they know deep down in their soul that they're wicked, that they're evil. They're gonna, there's not going to be any doubt. And so, in, also in Luke 21, men's hearts failing them for fear. All right, they're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's the end of the world. You know, <laughs> if they thought that for even just a little bit, that, oh, we got a second chance here. It's only for a thousand years, but we got another chance. They wouldn't be having heart attacks. The, all the tribes of the earth wouldn't be mourning. But they all instinctively know. It's how God has programmed us. It's how God has made us to know these things. And there will be no doubt whatsoever when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that it, it is the end of the world. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Scared to death, man, because they know this is it. This is it. This is it. It's the end of the world. And there is no more opportunity. Not even when Jesus comes. When he's in the clouds, that mo the very moment, it's over. That's it. It's over. There will not be another moment for the unsaved to be saved. It won't happen. It won't happen. In fact, you see all these, you see all these, um, you know, these things about UFOs and all that. They might have a moment when they, oh, a UFO. No, it's the end of the world. All right, and it's it'll be too late for them. That's why. That's why all the earth will mourn. At that moment. Okay. Alright, so it's it's interesting. The sun is shining and there's loud thunder at the same time. That's incredible. Okay, so I just want to share that with you, alright? I mean, think about this stuff. Does anybody ever take a moment to think about what the Bible actually says? Do you know that the Bible is actually the Word of God it it's actually God the Word of God is God it's God speaking to us these are not the words of men 
These are the words of God Almighty. He has given us His words in a book. And it, there shouldn't be any doubt about it. I mean, if you want to have understanding, it begins with faith. It's always been about faith. All right. It's always been about faith. And without faith, the veil is upon your heart. You cannot see. So you have to have faith. And you should know that the Bible you hold in your hands is from God. It's not a translation. It's the Word of God. It's God. And without faith, uh, you're not going to understand. It's impossible. Impossible to understand. So let's read the Bible with faith. Okay? Now, I'm going to go over 1 Corinthians 15. Alright, because it, it talks uh, pretty good, you know, about the resurrection. Pretty good. All right, and boy, where should I start here? I could start at the very top. Um, you know what? Why not? Why not? Maybe somebody's new to this. And so let's just read the whole thing. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. All right, so there, it, it, there's been a little bit of time from uh, the moment Jesus, um, you know, uh, witnessed after he resurrected, after he uh, rose from the dead, and before he ascended to heaven. All right, so there's been a little bit of time, but mo you know, a lot of these guys are still alive. Some, not all of them, but uh, some of them. So some of you know, so. This would indicate to us there's a, been a little, there's been a, probably a few years, is what I think it'd be fair to say. I would not say 30 years, at all. Certainly wouldn't say 70 years. I think it'd be fair to say five to ten years. Maybe, maybe that's too long. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Who cares? After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also. As of one born out of due time. Alright. Um, at some point I want to get into verse 7. But if I bring it up, it'll I'll get sidetracked here. But remember that verse. And after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his church which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me therefore whether it were I or they so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yeah. And we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. 
and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In this life only we have hope in Christ. I'm sorry. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Remember what I'm talking about here. Jesus is the first resurrection. All right, to say that Jesus is not the first resurrection is to say that ye are yet in your sins. If Christ be not raised, then he's not the first resurrection. If he's not the first resurrection, then he's not raised. All right. Maybe if you slow down a little bit, you can see exactly how wicked this teaching is. It's pure evil, this teaching that Jesus is not the first resurrection. It's pure evil. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Remember what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15? It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Again in Psalm 110. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Uh, oh, where am I at here? Uh-oh. Can't find it. There it is. All right. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Again, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and they are destroyed forever. That's it. And then we are set back down on the earth, on new heaven and new earth. All right? I mean, it's simple. There is no dispensation. There is no bonus thousand years. There is no zombies walking around. None of that stuff. You got to stop believing the Bible. All right, I'm sorry. You got to stop believing that the Hollywood movies is the Bible. You got to stop believing that Nicholas Cage is the Word of God. You got to stop believing in those Hollywood movies as though they were the Word of God. They're not. You got to just believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Believe it's from God. And these things ought to open up for you. Really. It's hard. I get it because there are so many false teachers out there. You read what the Bible says, and then you hear, and this is contrary to what Reverend Smitty says, and, and you're scratching your head, and it's like, maybe I don't know the Bible very well. Maybe I should trust what Reverend Smitty says because I just don't, I don't know. And that happens. I mean, that happened to me when I was a new believer. You know, I would read the Bible, and then I would watch John Hagee, and I'm like, man, well, this don't line up. And I'd watch Jack and Rexella Van Impey. 
It's like, well, wait a second here. They, they say this, but the Bible says that. Same thing with Hal Lindsey. Same thing happened to me. And so when you're, you're vulnerable when you're a new believer, aren't you? But I'm telling you, if you just have faith in what the Bible actually says, and if you're able to just wipe the chalkboard clean, just wipe it clean, just forget about everything that anybody's ever told you, and just trust fully in what the Bible says. Just trust fully. Let every man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. God forbid, yeah. Let God be true. But every man a liar. As it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Consider every man a liar and just believe what the Bible actually says. If you have that kind of faith, man, your eyes will be open. And I'm telling you, it's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. And I love pointing this out. And you guys probably get tired of me pointing this out. But if that's the case, then good. Be tired. All right. This is incredible. Hebrews 11, faith, 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 faith. All the way from the beginning to the end, it's always been about faith. All these are... Every time the word faith is mentioned in Hebrews 11, it's incredible, man, 27 times. It's always been about faith. Believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he, has say, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantages it me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to a righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God I speak this to your shame but some man will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come thou fool that which thou sowest is not quickened it except it die and that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be but bear grain it may chance of wheat or of some other grain but God giveth it a body as it has pleased him and to every seed his own body all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another kind of another flesh of beast another of fishes and another of birds there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in in corruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a 
spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As in the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, end of the chapter. So, I mean, this is great stuff, man. I mean, I, <laughs> this is fantastic, and this makes it crystal clear, does it not? That at the end of the world, we are all changed. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. I mean, it, it's so obvious. It's it's incredible, really. At the end of the world, we are changed. And you go to First Thessalonians, four. This does not contradict what we're reading here. Does not contradict what we're reading here at all. All right. So we go to First Thessalonians four, and it says, "The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, think about this. When this happens, it's the end of the world. I, I, there's no way you can get around that. And then, um, when the dead in Christ are risen, they are up in the air with the, they're up in the air with the Lord. They're up in the air with the Lord. So this idea that there's a thousand year period where where what? You can't put these guys you can't say oh it's only the dead in Christ that are risen and then set them back down on earth for a thousand years. It doesn't work. Because we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. They're in the clouds. So what, for a thousand years, the dead in Christ are up in the clouds and it's just us that are alive? Yeah. 
and we're not gonna we're not resurrected we're not changed even though it says here in first Corinthians 15 we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trump this is the end of the world the last trump but the last trump is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there shouldn't be any doubt about that I mean have you not read have you not read the last trump? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. The great sound of a trumpet. We see this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 as well. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. It's the end of the world. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, it's the end of the world. And so what do you think? Jesus was ignorant when he said they shall gather together his elect? Well, what, you know, these the, these guys are asking him specifically, what is the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? And he leaves out a really crucial part of the end of the world? Well, they shall gather together his elect. So if you're not gathered together, you're not his elect, which is true. But what Mr. Pre-trib is saying is that all the saved people that are alive won't be gathered together. In other words, you're not his elect. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense, man. You're not making any sense at all. This idea that only the dead in Christ are going to be resurrected. And then there's going to be a thousand years where the living will then be resurrected. Again, I go back to, I, I, I'm not going to make it, man. I'm not going to make it. So by your logic, I had to just kill myself right now. It's my only chance. And you don't think that's the intent, the spiritual intent of what you're teaching? That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. That you're very subtly suggesting that saved people go kill themselves. Now think about this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent, which is the old serpent, which is the dragon and the devil and Satan, more subtle than any creature that the Lord God has made. And so here comes the serpent. He comes along and he tells you, okay, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, only those who have died will be resurrected. And the resurrection of the living doesn't happen until a thousand years later. Alright, you do the math. How old are you? Yeah, maybe you're 10 years old right now. Maybe you're 10 years old listening in on this video right now. Well, you might think, maybe I could make it. No, you're not going to make it, kid. You ain't got a chance. Man, you won't even come close. A thousand years, it's way too long. Not even if the little green man comes from Mars and injects you with magic potion, you're not going to make it. All right? I guarantee it. See, it is appointed unto man once to die. And then after this, uh, uh oh, I don't know. After this, uh, oh, goodness. And Mandela takes over after this, I think. No, 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 excuse me. Men, not man men it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so kid I know you feel like you're Superman and you're gonna live forever but I'm telling you kid in 40 years you're not gonna be thinking the same thing that you're thinking now it's gonna it's gonna hit you at some point Hopefully before something tragic happens, really. 
It's going to hit you at some point that you're going to die. You can't live a thousand years. You won't even come close. Won't even come close. So, knowing that, knowing that you're not going to make it until after, you're not going to make it beyond this thousand years. When these uh, serpents, these vipers, they, they tell you, that when Jesus comes, only the dead in Christ will be resurrected. When they come and tell you that you have to live beyond... I mean, they won't be honest about it, but that's that's what they're implying. Right? And you go to... Here, let me go here. Um, you go to, uh, you know, like Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21... You see uh, verses um, like this that uh, there should no flesh be saved. And where's this verse that I'm looking for? Here I have to. I think it's Matthew 23. You know you hear people talk about this, and, and people that have no. Or Ma, I'm sorry, Matthew 10. I should have known that. I apologize. Where are we at here? How come I couldn't see that? Oh, because I didn't go far enough. Right there it is. In Matthew 10 and Matthew 24, that he that shall endure, or he that endureth to the end, that shall be saved. In Matthew 24, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, what what's that mean? You've got to endure a thousand years. You're not going to make it, kiddo. You won't make it. All right. So that's not what that means at all. And that doesn't. And also, just sort of a side note here. This doesn't mean that. You don't need Jesus. All you have to do is stay alive until the end to be saved. That doesn't mean that at all. All this means is that there will be people being saved all the way until the end. All right, Because we know that if God did not come, or if, you know, if God does not come when he comes, that there would come a point where there would be no flesh saved. But for the, um, the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened all right so that's all that means so there will be you can take comfort in the fact that you can uh, still preach the gospel there's still a point to preach the gospel all the way until the end you're not preaching the gospel in vain that there will still be people getting saved all the way until the end of the world all right all right so I mean look man I wish I could help you but um, you're gonna to have to figure this one out on your own this idea that only dead in Christ will be resurrected it's ridiculous alright and then also at the same time at the same time it makes the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in vain to say that he that he is not the first resurrection. I mean, just come out and say it. The, just say it so you can hear yourself saying it. Say to yourself, Jesus is not the first resurrection. Go. I mean, you. If you're saved, really. If you're saved, you should feel it in your heart. You should be. You should feel that conviction because you know it's wrong. Deep down in your soul you know it's wrong Jesus is the first resurrection and it, really he's the only resurrection you think about it we're not resurrected of our own we're only resurrected because he's resurrected we're only going to have um, life in the world to come hereafter because he is life it, it, our sins are only covered because of his blood not because of our own it's nothing that we've done to save ourselves it's nothing that we've done that'll give us everlasting life it's all because of what he has done for us again Jesus Christ has done it all he's done it all he is our leader 
He is our Savior. He is our Messiah. He has laid down his life for us all. He has died and he has resurrected from the dead and he has ascended to heaven and we follow him. We follow his resurrection. It's not our own resurrection. We follow his resurrection. And I'm going to leave I'm going to end it on this note here. Remember what Jesus says in John chapter 11, verse 25. Here, let me open this up because I, you know, I just love everything that's in the Bible. It's incredible, really. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really incredible because this is not just a standalone deal here. You know, in Revelation 20, this is... This is not, uh, you know, a completely separate doctrine from everything else that we read in the Bible. This is supporting everything else that we've read in the Bible up to this point and after. This is just a, it's saying the same thing that we've read a hundred times in the Bible already. And that is that Jesus Christ has laid down his life for us. He is the first resurrection and that the end of the thousand years is the end of the world. And blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We are partakers of his resurrection. Alright. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We are the partakers of his resurrection. Right. Blessed and holy is he that has part in, his, in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now. Right now we are a royal priesthood. Right now. And the Bible is very clear. I mean, we, we're getting this over and over all throughout the Bible we are a kingdom of priests we are a royal priesthood right now a oh my goodness sakes it's unbelievable and this is not just a cherry picking and distorting and lying about the Bible this is everywhere and has made us kings and priests unto God everywhere we are priests of God and of Christ right now uh, it's unbelievable you're going to say, yeah, no, no, we're not priests of God, even though we're told over and over to go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, and it even says that uh, the, in this gospel must be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. And we're called to be preachers of God. And this is all throughout the Bible. This is not, well, here comes the Christians, now they're priests of God. The, the children of God have always been a kingdom of priests. It's not a new thing. It's, and it's not something that went away. Well, here comes Christians. They're no longer preachers. or no longer priests of God. Yeah, I mean, come on. Have you not read the Bible? Did you not read those parts? Doesn't your preacher, doesn't Reverend Schmitty, doesn't he talk about this stuff? How could you be ignorant of this? Well, look, it's I know why. It's because Nicholas Cage didn't tell you. He lied to you, didn't he? He suckered you. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. That's us. We are kings and priests unto God. We have everlasting life right now that'll never change the judgment of God has already been given to us whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the judgment of God has already been established we are saved sealed secure sanctified forever that can't change and once saved always saved now if you don't like it that's too bad you're stuck once you're saved if you're saved and you don't like the idea of being saved forever well you know that's just too bad but I have confidence you'll get over it okay and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded now this has been going on from the beginning of the New Testament 
and this will go on until the end of the world all right it's look how do I say this man you're not, you're not there's not gonna be a thousand years of zombies running around without a head that's Hollywood stuff man come on be smarter than that really be smarter than that so this is pretty simple then of course I've gone over um, you know Satan being bound it's pretty simple before Jesus came along and made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believeth in him right the kingdom of God was just among one group of people outside of that group of people were the nations deceived here comes Jesus making the kingdom of God available to whosoever believeth in him I tell you the nation of God or the kingdom of God should be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof the Jesus Christ has made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him so now Satan is bound now what happens when uh, Jesus comes in clouds of heaven we are lifted up in the air aren't we we're up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet so the, down on the earth in this moment when we're up in the air there is nothing but unsaved people right and among so the unsaved so Satan once again has control over all the people outside of the kingdom of God and so he goes out and he deceives the nations again remember what it says up here that he should deceive the nations no more this indicates that he was deceiving them before now Jesus comes along makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him now Satan's bound now when we're up in the air again then all the people left on the earth are deceived by Satan once again and then he gathers them together remember what we read in Matthew 13 the parable of the wheat and the tares this is the end of the world right and the wheat is gathered into his barn the Lord's barn and the tares are gathered and put in bundles and burned alright so also here at the end of the world we are lifted up in the air we are the we are the saints we are the beloved city we are up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet right and they compass the camp of the saints about that's when they're at our feet and we're up in the air and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel it's the end of the world that's it when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right should be crystal clear and this is easy stuff I mean this is supported all throughout the Bible and we just read the same thing over and over and over and over again this is not a standalone doctrine man if you're preaching something that is contrary to the rest of the Bible you should reconsider what you're preaching all right now uh, let me just finish on this that verse 11 this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right this is the parallel to what we read in Matthew 24 verse 30 all right and also it's also in mark 13 and luke 21 if you're you know curious but um oh and i'm sorry what i say 30 verses 29 and 30 okay let's not leave that out immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken whose face the earth and heaven fled away now this is important it's very simple don't make it complicated you only confuse yourself alright this is important because the earth is going away <laughs> and when we are set back down on the new earth after everything is all after all evil is destroyed we're set back down on a new earth with new heaven right, whose face the heaven and earth fled away so there's a new heaven and a new earth after this the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven set back down on the earth I mean, it's crazy it's it's incredible it really is it's incredible so i think i went beyond 15 minutes this morning so i should wrap it up here but if you have any comments or questions or anything uh please do share all right and it, look just if my friend for dog's sakes if i didn't care about you i wouldn't I wouldn't be talking 15 20 minutes or however long I've been talking on this 
Alright, I do care. I want you guys to know the truth. I want to show what is not true, and then I want to give you the plain truth that you might be able to see it. And the plain truth is right here in the plain scripture. The key to understanding the Word of God, it's not Bible schools, it's not Bible experts, it's not Bible scholars, it's not foreign languages, it's not extra biblical books, it's none of that. The key to understanding the Bible is faith. It's always been about faith. 